Welcome, my lovely online family, once again to our regular weekly gathering on the virtual settee of U2 Spain by the virtual pool. Today we'll be chatting to Alistair from Smart Currency Exchange all about how to maximise your pension and savings and investments when you're moving to Spain or living in Spain and how to pay your Spanish bills from a UK bank, for example, and get the same exchange rate each time. Yeah, it's possible. As usual, we'll answer your questions from the live chat and social media about that and anything else to do with moving to Spain if we can. If you've slept in and you're watching the recording of the show afterwards, you can find the time codes and chapter headings along here for each of the answers and also in the video description below. Just scroll right to the bottom. But no, watch the whole chat. Why not? Come on, gather round. It's time for our cosmic theme tune. Here we go. Let's dance. Oh yes, thanks to the groovy wizard Lee Spreadbury for our cosmic theme tune. Check out the link below to his funky YouTube site. Now, before I bring in my guest, three quick pieces of information for you. You can thank us for the helpful things you learned today by using one of the two links in the video description below. With one, you can buy me a coffee. It's a virtual coffee but it's still very nice. The other, you can make a regular donation through patreon.com and that's specially for close members of the family, just like you. And it's where you get some extra videos, behind the scenes stuff and um, lots of other things, discounts on t-shirts, that kind of thing. Number two, you can find loads of information and articles and links on our website, u2spain.com. Join the mailing list. Oh, has been invaded there by Walter Ego. Join the mailing list and I'll write to you every month. The mobile version of it's been updated recently and there have been two very useful new articles published on there in the past week. So check that out. Number three, last but not least, we have a special list of links in the video description uh, description below. Put your teeth in scats. And if you click on any of those, not only will you get great discounts on things that you need and excellent service, of course, from our partners, but also you'll be supporting U2 Spain. My favourite one, if I'm allowed to have a favourite, is Smart Currency Exchange, of course, because they're on today. Their link gets you a free account, a free advisor to help you access to an app, which we'll talk about in a minute, and a whole range of services to help get you uh, to get your hard earned cash over to Spain or anywhere in the world for that matter. Whether it's your savings or regular amounts like um, investments or dividends or pension or your monthly bills, a lot of people leave it till the last minute to sort out. So don't do that. Click on the link today. As I always say, it's a win win. And they're lovely people there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend them if I didn't like them an awful lot. So without further ado, let's meet my wonderful guest from there. It's Alistair from Smart Currency Exchange. Good morning. Good morning, Scott. How are you? I'm very, very fine today. It's a lovely day, just like it looks on this picture behind me. And uh, how is it over in the UK? Fantastic. I am currently sat on the uh, the Norfolk coast in uh, near Heacham or Hunstanton, if anyone knows that that area. So we're uh, we're, we're battling a relatively uh, a relatively unstable internet connection at the moment. A modest five megabytes on the uh, Norfolk coast. Um, so fiber optic technology hasn't quite reached us just yet. That's funny. We were just talking that about that before we before we came on air, weren't we? The the uh, the inconsistencies, and I'm. Uh, I'm what 20, 25 minutes up in the mountains in Spain, and we've got 300 up here. And at least, in fact, I measured it about 350, but we're only paying for 300, and that's because uh, Spain took the EU money that was offered and covered the place in fibre optics. So, uh, if only that would, if only uh, UK were in some organisation like the European Union, wouldn't that be wonderful? And they could have spent their money on that. There very, very true. I might have to get the, the shovel and cables out if it, uh, if it persists at this level. <laughs> yes, of course. It looked, it was funny when we did the test of the, of the live stream yesterday. It looked like you were in sort of Beirut or something. It's some kind of war torn uh, part, you know, no disrespect to Beirut, just the first name that came to head. So, yeah, anyway, it's nice and clear this morning. So, um, uh, we've got, uh, it's, it's towards the end of August now, half of Spain's businesses are still virtually shut down and the other half are rushing around 
dealing with the tourists. Um, has it has it been a busy time for you still in the world of currency exchange? It has. It's a really it's a really interesting. Um, Spain is a huge country for us as a, as a business. Um, we help people move money back and forward there all the time, as well as um, the rest of Europe, France, Italy, Portugal. Um, and August, August is, a, is, a, is, a, is a funny month, particularly when you look at it from, from the UK. Lots of businesses go on to, um, I guess, an, ex, an extended sort of annual leave period where they're working reduced hours. Um, and yeah, it can, it can be quite challenging for us to connect with the right type of customers. And if they're buying or selling property, um, there's been some issues around uh, lack of stock. So lots of people are still very interested in buying property in Spain and moving out there. But the property in August just hasn't been there for them to, um, to go and view. So a lot of the agents mm -hmm. are, um, are really struggling to find the stock. But no, for us, it's, it's still, still very busy. Just August is always a, just a slightly unusual month in terms of activity. Um, but we're looking at a very, very busy September. Um, we've got lots of, yeah, lots of prospective clients that are heading out on viewing trips and um, heading out to, to Spain and, and actually returning back to the UK as well. So yeah, should be, uh, should be good fun. Mm. I remember we moved last year, we moved in October and it was the perfect time we started looking for properties in, in September. And that's when, because uh, we were looking for rentals and that's when the, the holiday rentals market drops off mm. and, uh, a lot of the property owners, they just say, well, let's do a long term let then or just a winter let, you know, for the, the calm months. So yeah. it is the easiest time to find, a, you know, a long term let, I think, fortunately for us. And the best thing to do, a little hint for anybody who hasn't heard this hint before, get yourself on the ground. There's no better way of doing it. They you know it's all right being on one of the websites. But there's no better way than actually going to a village if you want to live in near one of the villages and asking the locals or ask the local estate agent that's a good way of doing it so there we go do you think the are you getting just as many clients moving from the uk to spain since brexit i think there's there's definitely been more uh, more questions and concerns about the, the residency rules and and visas that's i guess not, not not put a damper on it at all, but it just it's just added a different dynamic to people's approach to it. Um, but from our side, it still seems like people are yeah very very set on once they've made that decision moving to Spain, uh, regardless of the barriers that that may up um, from a number of different factors. People have well, I think once you made that decision, it, it would take quite a lot to to put people off, um, especially once you get dragged into the the charm of Spain and, and the way of life. Um, Particularly versus the uh, the UK, you know, a UK winter is um, a very different beast to a, to a Spanish winter. We're we're quite fortunate. So we've got an office in Benny Hoffa in Costa Blanca, and I've been out there in in January. Um, you know, it's been a very nice sort of 15, 16 degrees during the day, which for them mm -hmm. is a typical January month. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I'm glad we're we're all kind of quite looking forward to the slightly cooler weather. It's, uh, it's well, I can get my walking boots and start going up the mountain again. It's just um, as soon as the sun comes over the mountain at nine o'clock in the morning, it's just impossibly hot to do that. And uh, you'd be a fool. So, yeah, yeah. And uh, even in January and February, it's it's T-shirt weather down here on the south coast. So very nice. But not at night. It's it's colder <laughs> at night, but, but it's quite, you know, it's refreshing. And I just looking back at some of the videos I did last year, um or during the winter rather in the in the early part of this year and i'm wearing big chunky woolen um jumpers and uh, and barjas you know the um, big mexican kind of things just to keep myself warm in this uh, in this office that i'm in in the garden so yeah looking forward to get, getting that out for the winter again it's, it's a funny thing to say oh john uh, jason rather is asking is this is this backdrop where i live it looks lovely he says uh no this isn't this isn't my house. No, it would be nice if it was, but we've got a very nice house there. Uh, it, uh, it doesn't look too much different from that, actually. But yeah, not quite as big a pool, although I think that's a wide angle lens on the camera making it look enormous. Uh, yeah, it's just a stock photograph that I got from one of the stock photograph sites. There you go. So good morning to you, Jason, and good morning to Alan McAfee and John Bentley. They're all on the live chat today. So let's get on to the topic. 
So this is about how to maximize not only your big wad of savings that you're using to maybe buy a house or live on if you're on the non-lucrative visa, for example, but also the sorts of payments that you're having transferred from maybe the UK or the US on a regular basis like your pension, dividends from a business, investments, or even your regular monthly bills, because yes, you can do that. So, Alistair, tell us about the advantages of doing this through you rather than direct through the banks or other methods. Yeah, of course. So just to give everyone a, a bit of background, if you've not come across us before. So Smart Currency Exchange, uh, we started back in 2004. Uh, we're a privately owned business uh, with offices in the UK and Spain. And we're on a very simple mission to be the trusted voice in international payments. So we we help individuals uh, move their money around the world um, in a number of different currencies uh, by providing them with a professional uh, currency account management service in exactly the same way that a lawyer or a financial advisor or a mortgage broker would provide you with a, uh, a professional service. We do exactly the same thing, but with a very specific niche, which is, uh, which is currency. Um, and our, I guess our world that we work in was um, was was born out of uh, clients getting frustrated with uh, with banks. Um, I don't think the the service has really improved much since two thousand and four, <laughs> but you'd be amazed how many people still use the banks uh, to transfer rounds, um, either either out of lack of choice. Um, as Scats mentioned earlier, sometimes it could just be down to urgency. Things get left at the last minute, and the bank will obviously help with that but it can be a very clunky process um there's a number of different reasons the, the main one that we, um that we really stress is just the um, it's just the, the service of having someone that understands currency they live and breathe currency they're there at the end of the phone uh, they're always on effectively call for you to uh, to speak to about whatever type of transfer you might have whether it be 500 pounds to euros or whether it be something much larger like a property sale in the uk and um, that's going to be used to fund a property purchase in, in spain the, the mechanism behind that is exactly the same. Uh, the currency account management team will sit down and take you through a number of different um, scenarios and, and processes, and they'll look at the exchange rates. And I think, unfortunately, if you've ever if you've ever transferred money and been caught on the wrong side of a big exchange rate move, it can it can really make quite a huge difference to your um, to your budgets, um, especially if you are transferring regular payments over the course of a year. Um, if you began that in January uh, and then you fast forward uh, with 12 monthly payments, the exchange rate on average for major currency pairs at the moment is moving around 10% a year. Um, obviously, fantastic news if the exchange rate goes up and you find that you're getting a slightly higher payment each month. Um, not quite as uh, not quite as fun when it's uh, when it's going the other direction. Um, and if anyone's been looking at the, the dollar exchange rates over the last couple of months, you would have you know, would have seen euro dollar and pound dollar at, um, at record lows. Um, mm. And this yeah, this really does impact people uh, far beyond the Google or um, exchange rate updates you might get. So it's just really important that you have a plan um, for your currency. It doesn't matter how much you're transferring. Everyone should have a plan. Um, and that's what we're here to help you with. Take you through a couple of ideas, uh, provide you with some uh, some tools and products which we'll talk about a bit later um and make sure that you're maximizing your your funds um at uh yeah at, at all times mm -hmm. is there a minimum amount you can exchange no there's no there's no minimum um so we we, we we do all kinds of payments i think i mentioned this on the last video but we've we've done speeding tickets before and i think it was italy um right up to yeah right up to yeah much larger transfers from from property or um, it, yeah, investments. So, uh, but I think the important thing is whether it's a hundred pounds or a hundred thousand pounds, the, the process and the level of service is exactly the same. We're very conscious that, you know, all our customers are, are important and they've all got their own specific journey that they're going through. Um, so we don't have any sort of hierarchical system where you become a VIP member for X amount. You know, we treat everyone the same and make sure that everyone's got, um, the right, yeah, the right level of service. Mm -hmm. So I had a question on social media the other day about fixing a forward rate because I keep on talking about this on the, on the Monday live show, which uh, a lot of my watchers know about um, fixing the forward rate. They were asking about if if you fixed the forward rate um, and a better rate comes up a few days afterwards, um, are you allowed to change the rate? So maybe you can clarify what this fixing a forward rate or forward contract is all about. And that will answer that question. 
Yeah, it's a, it's a great question and one one that it won't surprise you that we get asked a lot. Um, so the the simple answer is no, um, you can't you can't change it. And just to explain a, a bit of the mechanics, so a forward contract is a very very simple um, method of purchasing a lump sum of currency that you need in the future uh, without having to actually have the capital ready upfront at your end. Um, it was originally designed um, for, for companies. Can you imagine if you, if you were a CFO or a financial controller and you have to buy half a million euros worth of product every year um, and that product determines your price that you charge your customers. If you don't have a fixed uh, cost on buying those euros throughout the year, you will be constantly changing the price of your goods to, to try and catch up with whatever's happening. So the full contract would say would allow that that financial team to buy all the euros they need for the year at today's rate and they get parked in a bank account owned by the bank and then every time they need the euros they simply um, uh, draw down from it so they would transfer over their their sterling um, and they would receive the euros at the, at the pre-agreed exchange rate so it's exactly the same for private clients um, you're effectively saying to us i need fifteen thousand euros across the next 12 months um, i don't need it right now um, nor do I have all of the funds to sit, but I would like to make sure that the exchange rate is um, is secure. So we, as the as the intermediary or the currency broker, we would buy those euros for you, and they will sit in a segregated client account under your account name and reference number. And then you you effectively draw down from them or take your funds out. So when people say, "Can I change the rate?" The reason why the answer is no is because we've already bought the funds. They are physically sat in a in a in a, in a bank account waiting for you to use them. So if a client wanted to, to um, effectively cancel the contract, uh, which which does happen, and, and we can obviously do that, we take the euros that we've bought and we sell them back into sterling. And that will then leave a, a net a net difference, if that makes sense. So if you bought them for if you bought them for ten thousand pounds and we sold them back and it was only nine thousand left, there will be a thousand pound deficit which will be taken out of the deposit you left with us. So um has realized that yes a four contract is a fantastic tool you need to be absolutely certain that you are going to need these funds over that time period if you're a maybe or an unsure then a four contract is probably not the right thing to do um because we are buying the, the funds for you just the same as a, a fixed rate mortgage or a um you know buy now pay later type credit facility if you were buying a car or um, an expensive item of, of furniture mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, can you explain the difference between there's, there's this order to buy as well? Um, what's the difference between the forward rate and the order to buy? Yeah, so so an order to buy is a very simple tool where um, one of the currency account managers will sit down with a client. Um, they'll talk to them about their budget and uh, what they're looking to do over the next few months. Um, and the client might say, this is quite, quite a common situation. They, they might say to us, um, I've got, I've got some money in my UK bank account. I'm in no rush to move it over to Spain. Um, however, I would uh, I would quite like 119. So they've given us an exchange rate they like. That's not available at the moment. Um, and what we would say to the client is, well, uh, to make sure we don't miss that, because the currency markets are changing in price every second, uh, Monday to Friday, 24 hours a day. Um, we can set up an order to buy, which means when that exchange rate becomes available, uh, our trading platform will buy the euros that you need automatically um, and then we will contact you to confirm that the uh, euros have been purchased and you would then pay for them and um, the reason why that's important is the markets the markets move so quickly and not every client is going to be available to take our call and it could also be at five o'clock in the morning um, and I, uh, yeah there might be some very early rises on here but I, I don't think our our currency account management team are um, are in the office at five a.m. every day, so it just allows us to allows us to to build that if you've got a desired rate you want, if it happens at five o'clock, European markets are opening, we'll buy the we'll buy the funds for you. Um, and just in case anyone hasn't done a currency transfer before, it's a very simple process. We buy the funds you need. You then get sent a contract via email, and that contract has our our client account details on it with your reference number. So you send your money in with a reference number. It then reconciles the two trades together on our, our platform and you tell us where the euros need to be paid and we'll send it out same day for you. So it's it's a bit like a swap. We buy the funds for you, you pay us, then we pay it back to you. 
Brilliant. Do you, um, if you're talking about paying bills or paying a speeding ticket, do you does Smart actually send, actually pay the individual utility company or or whoever collects speeding tickets? Yes. Yeah. So we um, we we can pay anyone. Um, so we have lots of clients sending uh, euros on to um, yeah, utility companies, um, so, you know, service charge, um, holding companies. Yeah, all, all sorts of all sorts of uh, destinations. Um, again, the reason being that a lot of people find their Spanish bank, um, their online system might be a bit clunky. They may not they may not get on with it particularly well, or they certainly might not have a local branch uh, nearby that's, um, how can I put this, overly helpful with that kind of uh, that kind of information. So what they'll, they'll come to us and say, 5,000 euros needs to be paid to this company. I need 2,000 euros to be paid here. And all we need is the IBAN um, the Swift or BIC code and a, and a reference number um, for that particular payment, and we'll, we'll send it there. Uh, we'll send it there same day for you. Brilliant. Just say good morning to uh, San Francisco Discovery. He says finally, I can see you live since we are in Madrid for three weeks. <clears throat> so, hello, San Francisco. I can't remember your name. I'm sure you've told me it before, but uh, put that down on the live chat so I can say hello properly. Um, Actually, I was going to say, you mentioned Spanish banks. Do you need a Spanish bank account to do all of this? And if so, does it need to be a high street bank or can it be an online one? It's a really good question. No, you, you don't. So although although smart currency, we're not a we're not a bank. Um, we're a financial service provider. We we can send funds to uh, yeah, any any destination, um, whether it's yeah, whether it's your own bank account, an online bank, a challenge bank. Um, is we actually we actually have a holding um so we might have a client that is traveling out to spain on a here's an example a client was traveling out to spain on a viewing trip to view a property um they hadn't yet opened a bank account uh, but they were fairly confident they were going to put an offer down on the property so they purchased uh, around eleven thousand euros with smart currency and left it in their client account they traveled out to spain saw the property they liked put the offer in and then from their euro account that they have with smart currency, uh, we transfer the funds to the agent and they secure the property. Um, and then they purchased another lump of, uh, of euros about a, about four weeks later. Um, <clears throat> during that time, they were then setting up their bank account. So we we had a we had a we had a sort of a pending transfer to their bank account. But in the meantime, they were worried about the exchange rate uh, moving lower. So they started to purchase the euros and sit them in there. Uh, in their client account with us. So important to stress, we, we don't offer bank accounts. It isn't a bank account where you could you know, walk into a branch and withdraw from it, but um, it can hold euros for you for a short period of time whilst you figure out where it needs to go or you're setting up a bank account uh, for it to be paid into. Mm -hmm. Sounds very handy. Um, a good question from Jason. Let's put this one up on the screen. To avoid double tax on pension, would you <coughs> excuse me? Would you advise paying my rent slash utility bills in Spain from a UK bank pension fund via your company each month? And what would your fees be? Oh, that's a good question. I think I'd have to, I'd have to be very careful on the on the tax front. I, I'm not qualified to uh, <laughs> not qualified to provide um, uh, to provide any any tax advice. But I'm sure Scott, you'll, you'll have someone that can clarify that on your. On your team, in, in terms of in terms of the actual route there of getting funds over here, um, it's all it's always best to yeah always best to have a look at the the path of least resistance. Um, if anyone's been sending smaller payments from the UK over to Spain via their bank um, since the UK left the the European Union, there's been uh, there's been a lot of issues around uh, payment fees. Um, so the the UK and this is, this is very boring technical chat, but the UK is still. Uh, the SEPA, so the Single European Payment Association, um, and that was agreed uh, pre-Brexit. So we should be able to send and receive euros across uh, across Europe without charge. But if anyone's been sending payments over the last six months, um, you will have noticed the Spanish banks in particular have found a, a loophole, and they have they have deemed the UK to be an international um, an international payment now, which by all by all, by all sort of by all sort of um, uh, extensive purposes, it is an international payment. It's going, it's going across the uh, the channel, but the UK should still be in the SEPA network. It should be free, um, and they're they're charging about twenty euros to receive payments um, into uh, into any Spanish bank account that's sent from the UK. Um, so we have a way around that. Um, euros for our clients. We have 
Uh, we have Euro bank accounts that are located in uh, in Germany uh, and also Ireland. So we're still able to make what would be deemed as a as a local uh, SEPA transfer, um, which can save up to twenty euros per transfer. Which again, you know, might not sound like a, a you know huge huge uh, huge amount, but obviously transferring it twice a month every month it adds up very very. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, I was going to answer a little bit of that question, Jason. You, um, you're never going to have double tax because there is a double tax agreement between uh, the UK and Spain. So um, you're never going to be paying the same, you know, tax in both countries on the same amount, anyway. But um, that your question does does sound like I'm not a tax expert either, and. Yeah, you need to be talking to somebody like Cassie or Brett, who've been guests on this show, uh, to get the exact answer to that. But rather than transferring a big wad of your pension fund uh, through that would appear in your bank, paying your bills from that pension fund uh, isn't going to incur any any tax because it's just a payment of a bill. So yeah, you're going to avoid you're going to avoid paying tax on that particular amount. Because you're not using that money, uh, uh, you're not having it transferred into your into your Spanish bank. So, I think uh, yes, it's going to be it's going to be a way around paying tax. That, but it's just it just means you're spending money on your bills. So that's kind of my garbled answer to that one. But my better answer is speak to Cassie or Brett. And uh, if you need their details, then ask in the comments below rather than on the live chat, because that disappears to me by the end of this program. And I'll need to do that. There we go. Jason says thanks. Um, OK, where are we up to then? What, um, any other services that you have that apart from the, uh, the two you've mentioned? I think I'm going back to the earlier point just around the, uh, the currency account management service. I've just I've just talked about a relatively uh, relatively niche um, scenario, but for for us, it, it it really is just having that having that initial conversation with the currency team. Um, they're all experts in their own right. They've been helping people move money back and forward from uh, from the UK and, and Spain in, in particular, of course, other countries as well for a long, long time. And they they know all the they know all the ins and outs. They know all the pitfalls and where people tend to trip up. Um, and they can really just help try and plan your uh, your next six or 12 months as accurately as possible and this this may this may apply to people watching the video now but i know lots of the uk banks in particular barclays um have been sweeping through their um their bank accounts owned by people that are now uh, resident in spain and, and closing them down um so that's that's been quite a that's been quite a frustrating um development and and also just creates a lot of uncertainty so um, again although we're Although we're not a bank, what we've been looking at is ways to help these customers um, and someone that might have a regular pension payment that was going into a Barclays bank account. We've now got the client to speak to their pension provider. Their pension um, payment each month is now being their uh, provider directly into the smart currency uh, sterling client account. And then we're converting it into euros and paying it into their Spanish euro bank account each month. That that solved a, solved an intermediate problem. Yes, we're not a um, we're not a bank, but we can sit somewhere between your pension, uh, your old UK bank account, and your Spanish account to try and alleviate some of those some of those pains. Um, so we we try and be as creative as we can. Uh, yeah, there, there are obviously rules and regulations that we have to follow, but every customer's got a very unique situation around transferring money, and we'll do our best to look at um, look at a few ways to make it easier, uh, cheaper. So get rid of any unnecessary fees or costs you might be uh, you might be incurring, um, and and yes, a smooth smooth payment journey. Mm-hmm. Jason's asking, what's the biggest high street bank provider in Spain? I th- I know Sabadell, Santander, Caixa, which is spelled C A I X A. That's the one I'm with. Um, there are some other ones as well. Can't remember their names. But I think there's about five, aren't there, Alistair? Yes, yeah, so you've got so there's there's Bank Inter, uh, Asia Bank. Um, so you mentioned Santander. Mm-hmm. Um, I know quite a few of them have merged recently, which has actually caused again that's a whole lot. That's sorry. I know that some of the banks have mm. 
have merged together, causing um, a real headache for some customers because they've uh, they've just sort of rammed everything together. Um, and obviously, they've got very different payment structures. Um, that's a good question. I feel like I'm on a quiz show now. I should really know them, but I, I've forgotten the other two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. There's one that begins with a B and it's just initials. I can't remember what it is. But yeah. Oh, BBVA. BBVA, yes. Yeah, and they've got kind of an online account as well, which can be handy. One with a Spanish eye ban. So uh, I think you need to be yeah. resident to have one of those. <clears throat> um, yeah. It, it was Keisha or Acacia that, that merged with a lot of banks. There's also the Cajamar, which is kind of like, um, uh, it's like a kind of rural bank that works like the old building societies, I think. And some people say, yeah, they're great because you can get you can get a free account, free from charges account at one of those. And other people have said, no, it wouldn't touch him with a barge pole. So you've got opposing views on that one. So, yeah, that's why I, what I tend to say is if you're looking for a bank, what you really need to do is be, look for a bank manager because they they often give you better deals in terms of, of uh, charges on your bank at, at different branches. Uh, and it's all it's all kind of down to the bank manager, which sounds a bit weird to somebody from the UK because there should be rules across the, the system. But um, my bank manager, even when it was a non-residence account before we'd before both me and Liz had sorted out our residency, he he opened a non-residence joint account and said, "Okay, we'll you know we'll waive the charges because we know that you're going for your residency. We know you're going to have a residence bank account, and we know you've got X amount of funds in the account. So uh, so we'll waive those fees and we'll we'll waive them as long as you've got a certain amount of activity going on in your account." Uh, each month in one of your accounts we've now got a joint account and two business accounts and he said you don't have to have like seven or 750 euros a month going through all each of those accounts you just need to be you know they just need to be active through even just one of the accounts then that would be enough so yeah that was all a deal done with the bank manager so it's not often finding the best bank finding the best manager talk to them and go in and talk to them yeah yeah it's very true I, I think as well if um if anyone's if anyone's wanted any specific examples if you reach out to um or tracy who's on the who's on the uh the, the portal on youtube spain um our team in spain and benny hoffer they uh, they've all lived out there for 15 plus years each um they've all got residency they all have worked in a number of different industries and they they just they just know yeah they know the area really really well uh, particularly the local banks because we've we've dealt with them a We've dealt with the banks a lot over the last um, sort of four or five years, so we can always try and um, try and give you some um, some sort of guidance on on where to where to go because it is a bit of a minefield. The banks they um, they all look they all look the same on paper. But there's quite a few different quite a few different nuances underneath the uh, underneath the hood. Yeah, yeah, and you get uh, nightmare stories on Facebook of people, uh, especially after Brexit, when there's there's people who were actually not having charges on their account previously suddenly after brexit they've they're now finding they're getting i don't know quite a few euros a month charged because they're non-resident uh, jm's actually asking what's the best account for people who are non-resident well that's a good question difficult to say on that one because you've you've not had the chance to go into a bank manager i mean if you're visiting spain a lot and you're non-resident you know maybe you've got a property there Go and see a local bank manager and, and see if you can get a good deal. Um, somebody was talking about the BBVA account as as being because it's like an online one. Uh, and some people have been able to get one with no charges on that. But I, I think when I, I actually went to make an application and they said, no, you need you need residency before you can get that. JM says, I have an account with Sabadell, but the fees are extortionate. Yeah, the non-residence fees can be a right pain. Um, speak to a manager is my is my only advice, I think, on that. Or talk to people on on some of the Facebook groups. See if you can get any recommendations. And it depends which area you're moving to as well, I suppose. Yeah, it's a tricky one. Um, so, uh, no more questions on the live chat right now. Oh, I mentioned the app earlier. You've got an app, haven't you? What do you? What can you do with that? 
Yes, we, we've got an app. It's um, it's relatively straightforward. It just um, just allows you to move money from your smart currency account into into euros and pay it to a to a chosen account. So very simple functionality, but quite handy if you're if you're on the go or perhaps you're out of telephone service um, and you can't reach the account management team in London. You can self serve on on the app um, and move money back and forward. But as I mentioned earlier, we we do we do really recommend, you know, regardless of how much you need to transfer, we really push the the phone service. We think it's such a such a rare commodity now in in the financial services world, with everyone trying to push everyone online and self serve. Um, you know, our, our phones are always always busy, and there's always someone there to speak to you and and get things done. In my mind, uh, a lot quicker than than, uh, than trying to fight. Like password resets and uh, authenticator apps, you know, pick up the phone. The guys will ask you for your your full name, uh, date of birth, and postcode, and they'll do one more verification check, and then that's it. You'll speak to a speak to a currency account manager, and they'll um, they'll figure out whatever you need to, to get sorted. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Um, uh, any other services that you that you've not mentioned yet? I think I think just a just a really um, Sort of stress that point about so maximizing pension and saving payments they're they're probably our most frequent regular transfers that we help people with to spain and but and obviously by maximizing it we mean looking at um looking at the uh, the bigger picture or the longer term um, and having a having a plan so at the moment sterling euro has been hovering around the, the sort of 118 119 mark which for the last two and a half three years has been a pretty uh, pretty static um, exchange rate range People will remember going back five, six years ago, maybe a bit longer. We've we've been at, we've been at 140 before, uh, and we also s scraped about 104 um, during the um, during the sort of uh, the initial phases of, of, the, of the pandemic. So the, the the market has got a huge range to play with, uh, but at the moment we seem to be in a bit of a safe harbour where not a huge amount is happening. But as everyone's uh, as everyone will have seen from you know, from the media and, and obviously experience it themselves, there are big concerns about uh, about inflation and, and the UK economy, which is being I guess heavily driven by the media. Um, and the market, the currency markets in particular, react quite adversely to that. Um, so there is most certainly going to be some additional volatility over the next six to twelve months. Um, whether it goes up or down is is uh, yet to be seen. I'm certainly not going to make a wager on it, um, but it does have an impact on on the on, the, on our customers. Um, if you're transferring pounds uh, a month to doing that at 118, then that's yeah that's great. But if you're in six months' time transferring a thousand pounds per month and you're getting 105, that's less money in your bank account each month. And whilst we can't control where the markets go, we can certainly give you it give you that opportunity to buy six or 12 months worth of your uh, regular payments up front. It'll be sat in our segregated client account. And then you set up a standing order to us for your thousand pounds. And as soon as it comes in, we allocate your euros, which we bought and paid out to you. So you effectively have a fixed income for that period of time. Um, yes, you could argue that the market may go higher, but at the same time, you could just counter that and say it may go lower as well. So it's not there to, it's not there to try and help you um, step in guess or outperform the market. It just gives you absolute certainty that for this period of time, this many pounds in our bank account uh, is going to be worth X amount of euros, and you can uh, you can budget accordingly. Mm -hmm. I remember when we exchanged last year, it was uh, I think I got one sixteen point something. Uh, and uh, the rates then went up to about 118 and uh, I felt uh, I felt bad at the time but then it dropped down to about 114 and then I felt good and there's there's actually no point once you've made the contract uh, I thought afterwards there's no point feeling good or bad afterwards about it you've just got to feel safe that you've made that you've made the deal and you know exactly how much you can budget for what you're going to do when you arrive in Spain. Once you've once you've made the deal, you, you know what you've got. And that meant that I could start making plans about lots of different things. <clears throat> so I just felt a lot calmer, I think, because at that point, when you're when you're thinking about all of the things you have to do when you move house and moving house to a different country, it's really important that you've got kind of a, a lake of calm somewhere which is the amount of money that you've got to spend at the end of it so 
I, find I think that it's, it's that. human nature, Scouts, isn't it? I think we we've I've worked in currency for nine years now, and I've had that conversation with clients millions of times around. Mm. Yeah, what happens if the rate goes up and it, even after they've booked it? And I just say to everyone, on a long enough time scale, um, the the exchange rates will, will will move, you know, out of favour exactly the same as, as an investment. You know, you hear all these these uh, these sort of famous tales of someone you know, selling a, an investment and then six weeks later it doubles in value or it crashes to to zero. You know, there, there'll always be a reason to you know to kind of um, to look at it in a, uh, a negative way. But like you said, it's just about the certainty. Um, mm-hmm clients ourselves even the even the investment bank so every quarter we release a um a quarterly forecast um gives you a, a really good view of what all the banks are predicting um gives you some really good information about what's coming up over the next three months that might affect the currency markets and looking at what the banks had predicted uh, back in um june time they are they are so far removed from where we are now it's almost it's almost comical and these mm-hmm. banks have got some of the brightest analysts you know in the world with as many computer screens as probably uh, audience on this on this call and they still get it horribly wrong so the expectation for a you know for a customer in the uk to try and set out outperform the currency markets it's impossible um mm-hmm. and it's a very dangerous game to play so we really just try and help bring those conversations back down to reality and double check what you need to what you need to pay when it needs to be in spain how much should be budgeted for let's not take any chances um, mm-hmm. and let's, yeah, let's make sure that we're, your funds get out there safely. Mm-hmm. It was really funny on my on the Monday show. I only started it, I think we're coming up to programme number 11 now. And round about programme three or four, I said, right, at the end of every show, I'm going to get out my crystal ball and try and, and, try and predict what's going to happen in the next week or over the next few months. And um, yeah, it's, uh, sometimes I, I only... I only let it go for two or three weeks because it was just, it was just a, a silly thing to do. You know, I thought it would be fun to do that at the end of the show, but it just worked out that one week I was completely right, another week I was completely wrong, and another week it didn't change at all. And um, uh, so yeah, it, it there didn't seem to be a point in it. But uh, it's worth watching that I, I do the the live rates every Monday. I tell people exactly what they are, and I use the smart currency exchanges uh live rate website where you can see the rates changing by the second and um and it's it's really useful to know uh i i relate that to somebody buying say a five hundred thousand euro property in spain uh, because it gives you a really good idea of what you know i know not everybody's got that kind of money but you can work out from that very easily if you're only buying a hundred thousand euro property you can just divide it by five um, but it just shows you the, the fluctuations in the rate just on a on a daily basis or a weekly basis are um, are just ridiculous. You know, the, it changes by the second, and and it is going to go up or down below the level that it that it is right now. It's it's almost guaranteed because the if you look at the graph, it goes like that. It's never a really smooth line. Um, and like you said before, if you look at a graph over the last um i tried to go back to, what was it about 25 years and the dollar to the euro it's almost at parity at the moment isn't it it's uh it's almost at one 1.0 it was 0.998 last monday um and the last time it, it went the other side of parity at one point something was uh, between 1999 and 2002 i think um and since then it's not it's so it's it's just been heading up, up and up and up, or down, down and down, depending on which side of the Atlantic you are. Um, yeah, impossible to tell, but it's great for anyone from America at the moment wanting to to buy a property in in Europe or in the or in the UK, because it seems like the dollar against the pound and the dollar against the euro almost follow the same kind of graph. Not sure why that is. Any ideas on that? The um, well, the the, U- the U.S. dollar has been very very strong over the last um, over the last six months, um, and they're certainly not they're certainly not void of any of the the risks to the economy that the U.K. and um, Europe are. But there is there is just this sense that the um, the U.K. is in a is in a more vulnerable position in terms of uh, in terms of inflation and also how the Bank of England are going to react to. Um, 
uh, to, to interest rates over the next six to 12 months. And it's, I, I hate to use the phrase, they, a lot of people just refer to the US dollar as a safe haven. Um, mm -hmm when yeah when uh when things uh when things escalate so you've obviously had the ukraine russia conflict which is ongoing huge spikes in um uh com commodity prices you know the us dollar seems like a very safe bet at the moment as opposed to anything else um so it's just continuing to build build momentum um but yeah i certainly i know if you're if you were sending money out to america at the moment or worked in you worked for a company that buys goods from overseas in US dollars. It's it's a very challenging time at the moment. Being below 120, um, not many people will have budgeted that in their uh, in their forecast over the last couple of years. But it is it's the way it's gone, and we can't control it. We have to we have to just take appropriate action to try and protect ourselves from it going even lower. Mm -hmm. It's been an unusual summer. This the last five summers, you find the pound against the euro. The pound dips in the summer and um and this summer it's not and maybe that's to do with uh, the uh, the the fight for prime minister it's it seemed to be when when boris was uh was chosen as leader or when he was on the way to being the the leader the pound took a an upturn but of course that was in some uh, i think it was october last year when that was happening <clears throat> uh, but this year it was in the summer so but there's no one thing that's going to be the reason, unless it's COVID. When, if you look back at March 2020, the pound took a, a big tumble against lots of currencies. And you can see that on the graph. And it was also 2016. It was like from the end of 2015, when they were, when they were talking about having the referendum on Brexit. And it was the Brexit referendum where it, took the tumble from 144 right the way down to 110 or something like that. So that was the biggest change over the course of that year, wasn't it? It was, yeah. There was, um, I, I remember it really well, actually. So there was, there was a couple of different uh, conversations happening. There was, there were talks of, um, of Greece defaulting on a huge, uh, a huge debt. Um, and the UK economy was in a really strong position. I think the sterling euro was making inroads and everyone was saying, well, 150 is the next reasonable uh, milestone. And then, and then we just saw the headline come up on the news saying that um, David Cameron is already a referendum. And from that, literally from that moment, for the next year and a half, two years, the market just went lower and lower and lower to, to the range that we're in now. And we've never, never really, we've never really got out of it. The market's gone over 120 yeah. a couple of times, um, but it just seems to sink back to this kind of 118, 117 range. And it's, it's been stuck there for, for a long time. And I, I'm not really sure what it's going to take to, um, you know, to push it above or below that. It just seemed very, uh, very comfortable um mm -hmm. at these levels which is a good and bad thing so obviously we'd you know we'd love to see love to see sterling euro you know get back above 120 even 130 i'm sure that would, it makes a huge difference for everyone in the uk sending money over there but the, mm -hmm. the reality is there's also you know, there's also another side of the camp which are which are looking for the market to drop lower all the people emigrating back from spain to the uk going well actually you know 110 sounds great when i'm selling mm -hmm. my euros <laughs> so, yeah absolutely John Nelson. Good morning, John. He, he says, I was the same as you, Scats. The rate went up the day after I did the deal with Smart Currency, but then went down. So you felt better after that. Great service from <laughs> great service from Jack Wiggs and the team. Jack was my uh, my man on the end of the phone as well. Jack is, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's excellent. He's the uh, so he's the, the head trader there, but also the team leader. So he's um, yeah, he's brilliant, very knowledgeable, very, uh, very patient and um, just a really, yeah, really nice chap. Yeah, it was funny though. He was, he was, he was very patient with me because I was umming and ahhing at this point. I said, "Shall I take it?" No, I think it's going to go up to one eighteen. You know, I'm sure it was in my head. It was, it was going to go. I was going to wait for one eighteen, and then, and then uh, I saw it going down and went, "No, I'm, I'm going to do it now." Because, because if it goes, if it goes down to one fourteen right now, then that's that's quite a huge, huge dip on what I'd have in the bank. So, yeah. So there, well, there you go. Oh, uh, Gina Monaco says, hi, Scats from Canada. I wish my rate of exchange was better. Transferred large sum for house built in Javier. Painful. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know what the Canada rate is at the moment. There we go. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't recall, but I know it's been, yeah, similar, similar sort of challenges to, um, to the UK and, and Euro as well. Hmm. 
there we go so anything else we need to say about what you do alistair before we round up i think i think that's everything um I, again just the most important thing for me is the the accounts that we open for clients they're free to open um to open an account you you sign up via the track link uh, it'll take you through a very standard uh, due diligence process where it asks for your name uh, where you live your date of birth and then you'll be verified against a uh, an electoral role type uh, type database and once you've got the account open you'll be assigned someone like jack wiggs who will sit down and take you through a, a consultation over the phone uh, just to understand a bit more about what you need to do um there's absolutely no obligation to use the account uh, and if you decide that you don't need to use it or it's not for you, then you, you can you can close it and we can part as friends. So I'd really recommend to anyone if if you've got any kind of international payment or you're sending money between the UK and Spain now, have a chat with us. Let's have a look at how you're doing it. And if we can find a way to, to improve it, make it cheaper and safer in terms of just managing that exchange rate volatility, then I'm, I'm pretty confident we can do a good job of that. Yeah, brilliant. And also use the link below this video and uh, that'll help you to Spain out and it doesn't cost you a penny. Um, there you go. You still get the same rate and the same service. Um, Alan McAfee, I've missed out a couple of messages that were on the live chat. Uh, Alan McAfee was saying the fees for Bank Inter are €35 Euros per two years per person. That's a lot better than um, Santander and Sabadell. Best to check out if you want to draw cash from an ATM as some Spanish banks, you can only use their own ATM for free. Yeah, that's true. And they all have they all have uh, certain ATMs from certain banks that that charge and other ones don't. So, yeah, they have connections. So, oh, John Bentley had a question as well. That I completely missed out. Sorry about that, John. Hi, Alistair. Do you advise or have any recommendations about drawdown pensions? Um. He says, he's, he says he's not sure whether to leave him in the UK or transfer when we move to Spain. That's that's a question for for Cassie or for for Brett really. But do you have an answer? I, well, I just think in terms of the actual uh, mechanics of moving the funds over to Spain, once you've once you've decided the best place for that, um, there is there is no right or wrong answer to bring in. Um, you, you could transfer the entire thing in a, you know, in, a, in a lump sum if you let it build up or um, you could just set up a regular payment. And it may well be that smart currency could receive the funds directly from your pension provider, convert them into euros when they arrive and just send them to you automatically. So you almost have a, a, a currency exchange standing order um, out to Spain. But there, there, is, there is no right or wrong way to do it. It's whatever's going to be the least, the least hassle for you and the least... Uh, the least expensive because the worst thing you can do is, is just have it sent over to spain through the banks and, and you'll end up getting clipped um around 18 18 euros per transaction every single time um and the exchange rate that the bank will offer you will uh will be yeah will, will be uh, uh poor let's see if i can describe it mm -hmm. it's a tax question really i think that one um John, certainly it, when you draw down that lump sum of a pension, you get taxed on it. Certainly if you draw it down into your Spanish bank account, um, uh, however you do it, I don't know if, uh, yeah, they'd, they'd want to know where the money came from. If you've got a big lump sum appearing in your bank account and it would show up on your, on your tax return. Um, Jason was saying standing order exchange is what I was thinking. Yeah, through smart. Yeah, if you do it through there. There we go. Um, oh, JW says, are you new, JW? I've not heard from you before, unless you're under a different name. Great content, keep it up. I'm looking into making the move on a digital nomad visa once they release one. Currently working a physical job, but any ideas how to get into remote working? Um, well, that's a tricky one. You need, to, you need to be in that kind of a job, really. Um, you can't do physical labour jobs uh, on a laptop, unfortunately. That would be really handy if you could dig a hole on a laptop. <coughs> um, uh, I, I don't know. Is there an answer to that one, Alistair, that you can think of? Um, I think unless you, unless you, maybe maybe some of the forums online may have uh, may have some some tips and tricks around getting uh, getting interviews set up with. 
um, with industries that are looking for remote workers. But there's so much online now. I mean, it, it almost seems like every you know, every every business has got a you know, got an opening somewhere for someone to do something online. So I'd be confident you could find find something. Mm. Yeah, get the experience on it because I think with the digital nomad visa. I think one of their rules is going to be that you need to already be remote working um, in order to get the visa because you need some proof that that you can have some money coming in. I think it's just the same with any other visa, really. You need to prove that you've got the, the background or the experience or the qualifications in it. So develop those. Yeah, look on the forums. Um, Jason's asking, what's the what kind of fees is it for standing order exchange? Does the fee depend on the regular amount transferred? It's a really good question. So there, there are no no fees at all. So all the transfers that we make for clients are free of charge. Our, our revenue or our income is built into the exchange rate. Um, so the way the way currency exchange works, we have access to um, the wholesale price via uh, via Barclays Bank. So we're a client of Barclays Bank. Um, and then we buy the currency from them at next to wholesale, and then we sell it back to our customers at a, at a much more favorable margin. Um, so it's the same process if you called up Barclays or HSBC and said, can you give me a, a quote on 25,000 euros? They might say to you, yep, yeah, 115. You could call us at the same time and we'd offer you 117. So that that two that two cent difference is, is effectively our, our saving that we get from, from buying it cheaper and selling it onto our customers at a much more preferential rate um, and when we transfer your funds overseas there are no fees attached and we'll make sure that the full amount arrives in your spanish bank account um, so for example if you did get charged we can we can prove to you and your bank manager that we sent it by the correct method um, and they will often just uh, you know, surprisingly uh, refund the charge because they go oh they know what they're talking about um, and here's proof that the funds have been sent from a local european bank account um, by the correct method um, so sometimes they do chance it with uh, with uh, with charges and fees, but we can give you the payment receipt that will uh, that will help you get that refunded. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Jason says you mentioned eighteen euros. What was that charge for? I can't remember what it was. So th this is the if, um, if you were sending funds from from the UK, uh, either via your bank or potentially another another currency provider, uh, Spain and the Spanish banks will look at your transfer. Uh, as a international payment, and uh, they will charge a receiving fee, typically about 18 euros. And that shouldn't be the case because the UK within the SEPA network, which allows free euro transfers back and forward, but the Spanish banks have decided it's a bit of a it's a bit of a racketeering exercise because they realise that yes, the UK is still in the SEPA network, but uh, it's an international payment because the UK is no longer in the European Union. So it's a bit of a it's a bit of a loophole they found, uh, but if we transfer your funds out of our Germany uh, currency account, then it comes locally to, to the Spanish banks via, uh, via the EU, mainland EU, and it will remove those charges for you. Great. Excellent. So uh, um, anybody on the live chat, if you've got any more questions, then uh, I know there's a 20 second delay here on me saying this and you being able to get the message, but uh, put any more questions. Um, it, any quick questions in the live chat now while we tell everybody who's won the prize this week that we'll give out. So which of the questions we've already given uh, a couple of prizes to Jason, so we can't give him another one. And John Nelson's already had a prize. Uh, what about Gina Monaco? Are, are you still with us, Gina? Uh, all the way from Canada, who's had a, a painful uh, transfer and uh, painful currency exchange maybe a, a prize from us will uh, will give you a bit of a smile on your face there so please send me an email on uh, info at u2spain.com you can see the u2spain.com down there just uh, info at u2spain.com and uh, give me a a postal address for you in uh, in canada or or one in um, one in spain if you're going to be in your the house that you bought in Javier. Either one of those will send you the prize. And um, yes, so any more questions? Uh, yeah, well, Jason says, so I could transfer 2000 UK to Spain each month via standing order with your company 
for no fee. That's a yes. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's free. They're free, free transfers, and we'll make sure that the full amount that you transfer ends up in your Spanish bank account each month. So yeah, perfecto. Right, there's no more questions. So uh, before I tell everybody what's going to happen next week, we'll say a big virtual hug and a thank you to Alistair for being marvellous and helpful, and everybody giving a wave goodbye. Thanks very much for your time, Alistair, and for your Thank your you. uh, knowledge there we go Thanks. Thanks. and i'm sure we'll have you on again one day soon bye bye for now okay everybody that was a lovely chat wasn't it once again lots of helpful information and uh, next week on our cozy family settee we'll be talking to our best mate chris from upsticks.es uh, about visas and residency and there'll be a, a specialist topic within that which I will confirm during the coming week on the U2 Spain community Facebook page and on the uh, uh, sorry that's on the group and on the page as well so sign up to that if you haven't already and also subscribe if you haven't already to the YouTube channel click on the notifications bell and you'll be the first to find out what's going on and um, the week after that we're going to have John Nelson hello John he's been on the live chat you've seen him quite a lot and heard from him he moved from New Zealand and he's not arrived in Spain yet because he decided to decamp over to the UK for a bit first over in Scotland and um, yeah I'm going to record that show because in two weeks time we're both John and I and Chris and lots of other people are going to be at a festival in Malaga. So we'll be uh, meeting each other live while we put out the recording of the show. But you'll still be able to talk, everybody on the live chat anyway. And uh, you never know, I might get on the live chat myself and say hello. So if I don't see you then in the virtual Cafe of Cash on Monday, do do try and watch that show if it's not you know not live if you can't obviously a lot of people are, are working on Mondays it is the bank holiday on Monday and we're going to give you yet more tips on how to save money on your energy bills that's really important at the moment because bills as you know it's been all over the news are going through the roof so you need to find out ways to save so that you don't have these huge bills so I will see you next week if not on the Monday live at the regular time of nine o'clock if you're in the UK or Ireland or 10 o'clock if you're in Spain already. Uh, John's there. Hello. And uh, my lovely wife, Liz, says hi. As usual, you can join her for free virtual yoga and meditation. This is what you need as the as the, the interest rates rise. What you need is yoga and meditation. And she has a YouTube channel called U2 Yoga, spelt the same as my U2 Spain. And uh, the link is below anyway with the other ones. You can just click on that. And there are lots of different videos. Even if you've never done yoga before, it's a really nice one to go to. And, uh, and meditation, of course. So that's all for this week. Somebody sweep up the sausages and chivy along the chorizo. That's not easy to say, but I managed it. Right. It's time to head into the virtual Spanish pool. It's still quite warm here, and I think it's going to stay warm all the way through till November. Peace and love. I just want to try and make you jealous there. <laughs> Peace and love, guys. Oh, and let's have one more little cosmic dance before we go. Let's start now. <laughs> 